Good morning, beloved ones. How is everyone? Well, good, whole, happy? Yes. Oh, I could feel that, but I'm going to ask you one more time. You whole, healthy, happy? Yeah. yeah, that's it. That's the vibration I'm looking for. You know, I'm a big believer in vibration. Because the world and the universe runs through and by vibration. That's the creative force, the creative energy of of life. So whenever we have an opportunity to speak or to share or to express ourselves, we want to do it where we're touching the vibration of our faith, right? We want to not be half-hearted, oh yeah, <laughs> got to speak it. Scripture says you have to speak a thing as if it were, were. Speak it, feel it, and vibe with it. Well, I'm glad that uh, those of you who came this morning. You are my righteous, following the right uses of the law, not fair-weathered people. So I thank you. Tell me somebody say thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. Thank you for stepping up and stepping in. <laughs> yes. And thank you, wonderful Wayne and, and uh, Gabrielle, for our, our wonderful uh, message with our kids. My, my only regret is that I wish we had more mics on them so that we could hear them. So the next, so we can make them hear us, so we can hear what they're talking about, what they're singing, because it was so sweet and so precious. And so uh, for our AV staff, uh, when we have our little ones, you know, uh, let's mic them up because sometimes it takes a little courage to really sing out and speak your truth. They haven't really learned how to use their voice yet in a powerful way, but we're here to affirm them. The more we affirm them, the more we love them, the more we encourage them, gives them the strength to start speaking up and singing out. And that's what we need. We need future warriors, right? We need people who know who they are and aren't afraid to make them hear you and feel you. So thank you for working with our young, our young people. All right, well, let's continue this morning with our series on the journey into and beyond yourself. The journey into and beyond yourself. I came across a quote that I've used before, and it's by um, Lao Tzu. And Lao Tzu said this, he says, if you want to awaken, all of humanity, and that's what we're trying to do as light bearers, right? We want to awaken humanity. He says, if you want to awaken all of humanity, then awaken all of yourself. If you want to eliminate the suffering in the world, then eliminate all that is negative in yourself. Truly the greatest gift you have to give is that of your own self-transformation. I love that quote, right? Because sometimes our tendency is to want to go out and heal the world and change the world and do all this when we really haven't taken the time to change and transform and heal ourselves. We know the spiritual axiom is as within, so without. Sometimes we get very busy in the outer trying to fix that first before we have dealt with our inner domain and our inner world. It's a very powerful quote because I also think that we think that the world will somehow be changed, that it will be changed by the cessation of war, that it will be changed when we're able to feed, you know, all of the world's poor or those who are hungry. It'll be changed perhaps when there's the acceptance of all people and cultures and religions and ways of being and ways of life. Maybe it'll be healed when we're able to heal this sense of greed or the sense of wealthy, uh, uh, wealth being held in the hands of just a few. That, 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 that is what's gonna heal the world. But here's the catch. Before any of those things can happen, and I believe that they can, but before they can happen, 
We have to look at where's the true transformation. Unless there is a transformation in consciousness, in consciousness, then all of those things might not work. Unless there is a change, real change in our inner being, how we're seeing and thinking before we act, how we're being, then there won't be a lasting change. We, Because we are feeding people around the world. We've got, if you look on TV, there's lots of programs. People are asking for money and we're feeding people. And yes, there's some peacemaking efforts. We're trying to stop wars, this war in Yemen or wherever it is. We're doing all of those things. But because there hasn't been that deep shift in consciousness, those things keep returning and repeating and repeating. This is why the Bible says, look, when you sweep your house, you know, there's a, a, a quote, a, a story about the uh, house being swept of seven demons, but, 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 but all of a sudden they were clean, but then what? Seven more came back worse than the first seven because it was an outer cleansing, an outer sweeping, but there was no cleansing of consciousness. And so when we do all this outer work first without taking count of our inner countenance, our consciousness, then that which we think we've healed simply what? Returns. So we're looking at this shift of consciousness that must take place on the planet. Now, one of the things that I'm excited about, and I say this very often, is that what we're seeing really is, try, is the birthing of an elevation of consciousness within the individual as well as within the collective. And this is why I believe that what we are witnessing right now really is a good thing, it's a great thing, because what's happening is we are, we are seeing exactly what needs to be healed in our humanity. You know, before we could kind of, we could kind of ignore it, pretend that it didn't exist, that everything was just, you know, unfolding perfectly, but right now, everything is so upfront that we have no other choice but to see what needs to be healed. We see it clearly, do we not? You can see that, you know, we got to heal this greed that is on the planet. You see it, right? That people are doing anything for the sake of what? Getting more money. We've got to, we can see that we've got to heal uh, uh, this, 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 this great lust for power. It's not, you know, what, what someone said, who was it? I, I forgot the quote was, when, the, um, when there is a lessening of this love for power, then the power of love will be able to manifest. See, there's a difference between the power of love and love of power. And so we can see what's happening with love of power. That again, people are willing to sell their souls for some power. Power over. Right? We can see, and it's so evident when we can see that, wow, there's, a, there's this great sense of uh, I, I am superior and you are inferior. And we see it showing up all over the world by looking at how you appear in the outer and how I'm appearing in the outer. And somehow my appearance is better than yours. And we can see all of this, whether it's through racism or, or, or all these external measures of what we think is valuable and not valuable. And it's so prevalent, it's so clear that we, we are seeing it, which means we can now heal it. And it's the same thing that we're seeing in this collective the same thing is taking place within our individual lives and in our affairs because we know whatever is showing up, whatever is showing up in our own lives, whether it's conflict or inharmony or confusion or all of those things, that it is just showing us what also, what needs to be healed within us, within our lives, within our affairs. So because it's showing up, then let's, let's be bold and look deeply. Let's look deeply into our lives, look deeply into the self, look deeply into how we are experiencing life and showing up in life. Because you can't heal what you cannot see, right? You can't heal it if you, if you refuse to see it and cannot see it. So we wanna, we wanna be able to look. This is what this is about. We wanna begin to know ourselves, to see ourselves. Now here's the catch also. In this process of uh, looking at oneself and seeing oneself, we have to be kind to ourselves 
in the process. Kind to ourselves as we are looking within ourselves. We have to learn how to do so without self-judgment and criticism, right? Because if we make it too hard, too painful, and too shameful to look at our faults and flaws and whatever, then we're not going to look, right? If it's too painful and I got too much shame around that, then I'm not going to acknowledge it, I'm not going to look at it. I'm going to do, maybe I'll project it. I'll see it in you, but I really won't let myself see it in me. Because it's too what? Too painful. So we've got to be really kind to ourselves. So I was looking for uh, something because otherwise we'll remain blind. We're blind to our own being. We have blind, and every, all of us have our blind spots, right? Do you know what your blind spots are? Probably not because you, you're not looking at them. <laughs> but I guarantee you, other people know what your blind spots are. Right? And we remain blind in what we really want to see. So I found this wonderful um, writing from the Council of the 13 Indigenous Grandmothers. Do you all know about the 13 Indigenous Grandmothers? Yeah, most of you do. It's a group of of, um, you don't? Okay, there's a group, of, it's called the Council of 13 Indigenous Grandmothers, and these are 13 elder uh, women from around the world. A lot of them are Native American, but they're from Brazil and all over uh, Japan. And these grandmothers have come together, and their sole purpose is to hold the high vibration and keep the high watch through prayer for the planet, for people, for life itself. And so they gather and garner their wisdom, and people go and hear the wisdom of the grandmothers. And they've been doing this for, for years, and it's the Council of the Indigenous Grandmothers. And this is what they wrote um, recently. They said, as you move through these changing times, be easy on yourself and be easy on one another. You are at the beginning of something new. You are learning a new way of being. You will find that you are working less in the yang modes that you used to. You will stop working so hard at getting from point A to point B the way you have in the past. But instead, you will spend more time experiencing yourself in the whole and your place in it. Instead of traveling to a goal out there, you will voyage deeper into yourself. Your mother's grandmother knew how to do this. Your ancestors from long ago knew how to do this. They knew the power of the feminine principle. And because you carry their DNA in your body, this wisdom and this way of being is within you. Call on it. Call it up. Invite your ancestors in as the yang-based habits and the decaying institutions on our planet begin to crumble. Look up. A breeze is stirring. Feel the sun on your wings. And I love this teaching, especially that last sentence as you, as it says, she said, they say, as the yang-based habits. See, we have a yin and yang of life, right? There's a divine cosmic flow. I don't know if I talked about it. There's chaos within divine order and divine order within chaos. There's a, there's a balance, the yin and the yang. And, and what, she, what they're saying is as this yang energy, which is not bad energy, but when things are out of balance, then we have, a, we, have a, we have a problem. And so what we're seeing is this yang energy out here is beginning to crumble. That's so what the yin energy can come in and take its place. This is a time of the divine feminine. And it moves. We have eras and times and ages when, when we shift from what, you know, this building, 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 out of focus, building, progress, great, needed. Now there's integration, harmony, connection. That is the yin that must come in. And so we're, we're learning a new way of, of being. 
how to be in this yin consciousness. And so what she says is, when we look at all the stuff that's happening out here and it begins to crumble, don't worry, look up. Look up and, and feel there's a breeze coming. And, and then I love it, then, and, it's, and then it says, look up, a breeze is stirring, and feel the sun on your wings. Which means we, we get ready to fly. We're getting ready to move to a new level. And one of the things, you remember one of our taglines used to be soaring on the wings of spirit. We're getting ready to soar on the wings of spirit. And I love that. But the flight that we're taking is not the flight for, uh, for going up. I believe the flight is to go within. Because the way up is the way in. And the way out, the way out of all this turbulence, all this stuff is the way in. And so we've had a lot of focus in progressing and advancing humanity and our evolutionary leap in the outer. Now it's time to go within, and the next evolutionary leap is learning how to advance from within, to touch the yin energy, and to move about. And so we want to do so as we go within, and we're finding our place, and we're touching who we are and discovering ourselves, but we want to do it in a way that is conscious, in a way that is kind, without pain or shame or blame of self. Because you know we can get on ourselves harder than anybody else, right? Everybody else, they're willing to do it too. <laughs> but we kind of jump in and take over and do a lot for ourselves, make one mistake and we beat ourselves up and beat ourselves up and that's not the way anymore. Because if it's too hard, you won't go in and you will not look. So we want to be able to do that so we, we're able to stay in this beautiful state, in this consciousness. Now, again, I'm focusing on the teachings that I have uncovered uh, through this process of uh, the O&O &O Academy. And we have been working on the self-knower levels. And, and uh, I just finished self-knower two, but in self Noah one, we were encouraged as, as part of our going within, and we're looking at all kinds of things within ourselves, but one of the things we were, we were encouraged to look at is to look at our level of attachments. And so attachments, and they gave us three areas that they wanted us to focus on. And so the first area that we looked at was our attachment to external appearances, our attachment to external appearances. See, we are so conditioned to looking without. This is reality. What I see with my eyes and, you know, what's happening in the world, that's real. What's showing up out there, that's real. It's reality. But we're conditioned to think that way and to feel that way by what we see out here. And in fact, a lot of our judgments that we make are based on these external things, right? By the way something looks. Our judgment is based on by the way something looks or how people look and how we think that they're showing up. And what's happening is, if you think about it, a lot of our attractions to someone or our, even our aversions to someone or to a person is often because of our attachment to external appearances. We look at the outer, and then we make a judgment about what we think we are seeing externally. And yet, when we do that oftentimes, and you make your assessments and your judgments based solely upon what you're seeing, you can be led amiss and astray, right? Because we all know that all that glitters is not gold, right? Because we've been, everybody's had the experience of being trapped by, ooh, that looks good over there. <laughs> it's all shiny and glittery. It catches our eyes, and we say, ooh, this is something good until you get it. <laughs> then you have a whole nother, that's a whole nother story, which we'll cover maybe next week. <laughs> but all that glitters is not gold. And everything you see isn't truth or reality. But we are conditioned, and so what happens is we, 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 we think that, ah, I see it, so we make a snap judgment about what we think we're seeing based on what we see, right? And, we, and when we make this snap judgment, we put it in our own frame of reference, because that's all that we, we 
they've been conditioned to do. We, we see it through the lens of our own being. So we have these snap judgments. We're now putting it in the framework of how we see things. And to give it even further uh, uh, insult, we'll begin to add meaning to what we think we're seeing. And not only that, if we don't have meaning, then we start making up stories about what we think we're seeing, right? Stories about what we think this means. Stories about how we say this is showing up. And then we begin to interact with the stories. We begin to interact with the projections and the perceptions and the story we have told ourselves about this situation or this circumstance or this person, which may or may not be as we have decreed it to be. But our interaction, and which is why usually it's hard for us to let people get out of the box. When you have, right, you're relating to someone, and if they've done this one thing, you see them as that way all the time now. Now, they could be over here, but it don't matter. You have now related to them as this story you have made. And so it's hard for us to wonder. Let me figure out, well, what's happening? Why aren't my relationships working? And we'll talk about that next week. But we're relating to the, to the story of, of what, and it, and it may all be an illusion. It may be simply a figment of our own making. Those snap judgments, oh, I know how they are. Oh, I see that, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and we all do it. Let's just be honest, we all do it. But the key that I'm learning is to be conscious of when I'm doing that that I am just making an assumption, I'm relating based on my own perceptions, my own limited perceptions. And what happens is when we do that, we may miss that person's beautiful countenance. If I'm only in the external appearance of how you look, what it looks like to me and how you look to me and how the situation looks, I may miss that individual's beautiful countenance because I'm looking at the cover, right? See, there's countenance, and then there's the cover. And we get all hung up in the cover and may miss the countenance. And not only do we do that with others, but we also then become sometimes preoccupied with our cover, how we look, how we look physically and how we're showing up. But even more importantly, we get, we get hung up on how I think that you think I might be. You follow me, right? So, so I'm, I'm hung up on my own cover, my own being, how I look maybe physically, but then I also want you to see me inwardly as this. And now I'm concerned about how you are perceiving me to be, my, my personhood, this, what's happening with this, this cover again. And so what happens is, we, we, because everybody wants people to think of them as wonderful beings. Everybody wants us to see, you know, you want, I want you to think of me as good, as loving, as kind, as generous, you know, as the, the minister supreme. <laughs> you know, all these things, right? That's, it's, it's, it's just natural. But what happens when those things, or I have those experiences when I'm not those things? And so I might want to then cover that up. I want to cover up my outside, and I also cover up my inside. And we do this to the extent that we are no longer our authentic selves, and we are lost to ourselves, because we don't even know how we are and how we should really be lost, but all in the name of show, making a good showing. As long as I'm showing up good, everything is all right, but that's not true. I don't know if you've ever remembered the uh, TV show. It was a British TV comedy show called uh, Keeping Up Appearances. And I love, there was a bit, you know, British humor is really funny, but it's dry. But anyway, this show, Keeping Up Appearances, there was one woman character, I think her name was Hyacinth. And yes, and oh, she was so concerned, honey, about keeping up appearances. She wanted you to think that she was so cultured and right and rich. And meanwhile, her sister and, you know, brother-in-law, they were all slobs and whatever. But she was always, when you came, it's like, oh, dear. And she was all that. She was to drive her husband crazy because everything on, had to be just so on the outer, right? And she would get into all this, this pretense, right? Pretending and, and fronting. You know about fronting, right? When people, you can tell when somebody's fronting, they just want to put this external to the front. And behind is a mess, right? <laughs> we are afraid to be seen because we fear being judged. 
We fear being judged because we judge, but we fear being judged. We fear what people might think of us or think about us, so we hide and we pretend and we cover up and we, we get into this, uh, we present a false image of who we think we should be. Not who we really are, but who we think we should be. But remember, you cannot heal what you cannot see. And if you're constantly thinking this is what you should be, but something else is going on, there's an incongruence between how you're being and living and experiencing life with what you're trying to project. And it doesn't work because we all see it anyway. That's the key. We all see it. And then we are into a suffering state. We're into, you know what I mean? Because the inside ain't matching what the outside is. And I'm so busy trying to keep up appearances. Keeping up appearances is too much work. So try to look at and see where your attachments to looking good lie. Because we all have it. How is your attachment to looking good showing up, especially when you're relating to other people? And, and see where do you lose your authentic self? And, 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 and are you somehow not being true to your inner state of being? Because sometimes, you know, we true students could get into that, how you doing, fine? How's it going, good? When true students means being truthful. We're going to get to the greater truth, the bigger T, but you also have to be truthful to what you're really feeling and what's really taking place within you. So check. This is about checking. Check to see if what other people think of you is more important to you than what you think of yourself. Check that out, okay? Because this is important for me. I recognize when I had to see that, well, you know, I do have that. I want to make sure that other people, my colleagues or whatever, see me in a certain light. And it's very important. But, hey, I might have, you know, a, a, a left foot going on or stumbling or whatever. And, and, and is it more important for me to make sure that they see me in a certain way but than I think of myself? What you think of me is really none of my business. But when I make what, I, what you think of me my life, then we're going to be in trouble. Because there's always going to be the ups and downs and somebody who will like you and somebody who won't like you, somebody who will, you know, uh, um, think highly of you and somebody who won't. I, I found this quote that said, the trick is to care about everyone while not caring what they think. I, I want to care about everyone but not caring what you think. Now, that, I'm not talking about, you know, if we're in a conversation or whatever, not care, I don't care what you think. Not that level. But as I, I'm not caring what you, what you think about necessarily me. I'm caring, so I'm going to listen to you. I care about you, but not necessarily what you think in terms of how you think about me or life or whatever. I'm willing to listen because I care. I'll listen because I care. I want to hear you, you know. But I'm not going to do it to the point where all of a sudden I can't think of myself, or I don't accept myself, or I'm not willing to place myself in the equation. The other day I was on a Zoom call with a bunch of Unity ministers and uh, Unity leaders in the movement, and um, it was a long call, and I had forgotten that I, I had my visual, you know with Zoom how it works, you can have the audio on, you can have your visual on, or you could turn the audio off and the visual off, but you can still hear. You mute yourself, but people can't see you, but you can see who's ever on the screen. So anyway, I, I get on this call, and it's a long, long call, and um, I, I just was there, present, and sometimes when I'm on these long calls, I'm talking about a couple of hours. You remember mine, I had like three and a half hours one time. It's like, oh. So sometimes, you know, I'll get busy, and I'll, I'll do some other things. I'll pull out my phone, and I'm listening and whatever, but I might, I might multitask. And so, you know, things are going on, uh, along well until I got these texts. About two or three texts came, and the text said, you might want to shut down your visual screen <laughs> because you're on there picking your teeth with a toothpick. <laughs> now, I had eaten something because I was hungry. 
forgot that I had my screen on, and I didn't want to leave the whole thing to go and brush my teeth, and there was a toothpick, so I'd just pick it and clean up my teeth. So I get these texts, you know, you might want to turn off your screen, because uh, you're on there with a toothpick. So I looked at it, I said, oh my God. And so I, it, I turned off my, my screen for that. And the thing is, though, and I laughed about it, but here's why I noticed I have grown. Here's where I noticed that I have changed about myself. Because while I was slightly embarrassed, a little embarrassed, I was still okay. You know, I was okay. And uh, I, I just began to laugh at myself saying, Lord, have mercy. And then I had this image of me or the big, and apparently I must have been, you know how sometimes the person could be in the front of the big screen. I was in the big screen just. <laughs> <laughs> now, pre, you know, years ago, well, previously, I would say, I would have been mortified. Mortified, like, oh my God, what will people think of me? The right Reverend Sylvia Sumter, senior minister of unity of what the great unity of Washington, D.C., because we have a good reputation in the, in the movement, okay? This, this, this ministry is held in high regard and highest. And I thought, oh, God, what are, what are people now going to think of me? Oh, my goodness, you know? Uh, my self-image is now tarnished because, you know, I know how I would probably make a judgment of this big saint. You know, if you had this saint and this saint's still picking their teeth or whatever. <laughs> I went down a few notches in their esteem and their thoughts of me, you know. But instead, I, I just felt a little embarrassed and I kept it moving. I just laughed at myself and I said, oh Lord, that'll teach you. Make sure that you, you know, turn your screen. If you're gonna do something, if I'm gonna eat, turn your screen off, I can still hear, I can see them, they just can't see me. So, but, but years ago, I would just be, oh my God, I probably would never wanna go to a conference again or never be seen, you know? And it's like, okay, well, there you go. There, there, there you have it, right? So it was important for me to understand, wow, there's been a shift in me. I could see the change because what is important to me, more important to me, is my acceptance of myself, my whole self, my holy self, my complete self, the self that walks on water and the self that picks her teeth while she's uh, on the Zoom camera. All of that, right? Jesus said it first. He said, judge not by appearances but judged by what? Righteous judgment. Righteous judgment. Righteous judgments are those judgments that come from our higher selves. Righteous judgments are the judgments that come from our divine selves. And if it's coming from our divine self, then it has to include some level of acceptance, a level of love, a level of understanding, right? A, a, a level of connection and, and honoring, because those are the qualities of the divine, not alienation and separation and wrongness. If you're making somebody wrong, then it's probably just your personal judgment. It is not a divine, it's, a, it's based on appearances, it's just based on the world, it's based on something outer and not what is necessarily true. Righteous judgment. That's your ability to see yourself rightly, to see your whole self without condemnation, without being critical, seeing it as you begin to heal whatever it is that is out of alignment within yourself so that you can unfold your true self, your powerful self, your divine self, your God self, and your human self. We have humanity, which means we're going to have some flaws and some points of just, you know, where we're not manifesting our perfection. But even in that, it's perfect. Your imperfection is still perfect in the eyes of God. That's the powerful. So see yourself without judging yourself. See yourself without thinking how you should be appearing. It's not about how you should be appearing. See what is taking place within you, whether you're, what you're feeling and what you're fearing. See what you're feeling and see what you're fearing. Because what? Whatever you, that, 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 that what you feel shall come upon you. So see it. See what you're feeling. 
don't mask, don't cover up, don't hide, but don't also dive into the, oh, I'm a you know, terrible person. There's a joke my mom and I have, sometimes when we fail to do something, we both go, we live, so ooh, I'm a we, we some terrible people. You know? <laughs> and then we laugh about it, not really meaning that, but meaning that we missed the boat on that one. You know, we joke about it, we laugh about it, but we see it, and then we can what? Heal it, move on, correct it, do whatever we need to do with it. But from a place of inner integrity, from a place of being, being comfortable with oneself, you know, there's an unfolding of your inner being. There's an inner freedom that comes when you can be free to be yourself. There's an inner freedom. I don't have to pretend, I don't have to hide, I don't have to make you think I'm this way or that way or this. I'm just going to be myself. And I'm going to look at where I, where I have these attachments to the external world of appearances. Be ye in the world, but not of it. I don't need to be of it. I don't need to make sure that I'm showing up in a way that you think is appropriate. But what does my spirit and soul call for me to be in this moment? And when we tap that spiritual essence, it'll always come out right. It'll be good enough because it's God enough. You understand when you really, it's God enough. And when it's God enough, it's good enough. So I recognize I'm God enough, whether I'm picking my teeth, preaching a sermon, healing somebody, healing my, sharing my generosity, having a conniption. It's all a part of my divine, as long as I can see where I am in the process and not covering up and masking anything within myself. Everything is an open book to God, and I place it all before God, and I know that all of it is accepted by God because I've been created by God. So, yeah. So your assignment for this week is I want you to begin to notice your attachments to the external world of appearances. Look and see how you're showing up and how you appear to be, and what's that effect taking place within you? And is it causing you self-imposed limitations? I don't want to express this way because they may think that, or they may, now I've imprisoned my own self. I'm afraid to be me because you might think less of me. But see where those things are showing up and where you might have some false narratives about yourself and false narratives about other people. And if you are interacting with your projections of other people or are you able to really just simply see them as they are? Let them be. Let yourself be. Because there's nothing like being yourself. So I'm going to invite you to join us next week and we're going to look at our attachments to the idea of success and failure as it relates to our lives. And then we will also look at our attachment to pleasure and pain as it relates to our relationships. Ooh, yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> because we're always in relationship to someone or something, right? And so we want to look at how we attach to that as well. So in the meantime, I want you to drop your covers. Drop your covers so that your countenance can shine. Drop the cover and let the countenance be present. Blessings and namaste. Blessings. Blessings. Thank you.